Katie Altman, Clemson Extension Water Resources Agent based in Sumter County. And today I'm joined by Karen Jackson, a fellow water resources agent. Karen, tell us a little bit about the area of the state you cover. Hey Katie, I'm the PD Area Water Resources Agent with some statewide responsibilities and I'm based out of the Richland County office. I'm really excited because today we get to talk about one of our very favorite topics and we've got some really cool clips and interesting facts, so let's jump right into it. So in this video, we're sampling for aquatic macroinvertebrates and we're doing this so we can figure out if the stream is healthy. It might be difficult to tell if a stream or pond is healthy just by walking by and looking at it, right? And you can sample some chemical conditions like pH, dissolved oxygen, temperature, and water clarity. Another way to quickly assess water quality and habitat provided by the water body is by sampling for aquatic macroinvertebrates. These are organisms that lack an internal skeleton and can be seen without a microscope. Aquatic means they live in the water. So the presence and diversity or number of different species of aquatic macroinvertebrates can give us a pretty good idea of how healthy an aquatic habitat is. Right, and the taxa or group of related organisms can also tell us about the health of our stream or pond because some macroinvertebrates are more sensitive to pollution than others. It's also important to know that you don't have to identify these aquatic organisms all the way to genus or species to give you a sense of water quality. A quick look to see what orders are present is enough to make a general assessment. Today we'll talk about several different macroinvertebrates and we'll classify them as sensitive, somewhat sensitive, or tolerant. A tolerant species is able to live in a water body even if it has been heavily impacted by human activity and pollution. A somewhat sensitive species can handle somewhat impacted environments, and a sensitive species needs a very healthy aquatic environment to survive. It's important to know that you might find tolerant species even in a healthy aquatic environment but you'll also see a diverse population of sensitive and somewhat sensitive species. And if we only find tolerant species, that might suggest it may be impacted by pollution and nothing else can live there. Let's take a look at three different water bodies and see what macroinvertebrates we can find. Our first stream is in the PD River Basin. This stream receives runoff from a mix of neighborhoods and wooded areas. Runoff is water that runs over the ground and may pick up pollution along the way. This is a crane fly larva from the family Tapulidae. They're a somewhat sensitive family that feeds on leaf litter or dead leaves at the bottom of the stream. This makes them a very important part of stream habitats as they break down leaves and prevent them from building up in the stream. Crane fly larvae spend anywhere from six weeks to several years in the water, but only survive for less than a month once they've emerged as an adult. Many of the aquatic macroinvertebrates we'll see today have really complicated life cycles and look real different as adults. This is what an adult crane fly looks like. We also found this freshwater clam in the sample. It's a somewhat sensitive species with a fleshy body enclosed between two clamped shells. In the video, you can see the clam moving across the tray with its foot. Our next stream site is located in the Savannah River Basin. It's surrounded by mostly forest and is unimpacted by human activity. It might look like Karen's just holding a bunch of sticks, but there are actually macroinvertebrates in there. This macroinvertebrate is called a case-building caddisfly. It's a sensitive order that builds a protective case using items found in the stream, like leaves and sand. Using these natural materials can help them camouflage and hide from predators by blending into the environment. This is what an adult caddisfly looks like. This is a flat-headed mayfly nymph in the family Heptogeneidae. You can see that it's very flat, which helps it cling to rocks and fast-moving water. Here you can also see its gills moving. It's a sensitive species that cannot tolerate pollution and requires plenty of oxygen. We also found a stonefly nymph in this stream. Stoneflies are among the most sensitive of aquatic insects and are generally only found in swift-moving water with high levels of dissolved oxygen. Here's an adult stonefly. The last water bottle we sampled is a little different because it's a pond in the Catawba River Basin. We used a different sampling technique here. In the streams we've seen so far, Karen used a D-frame net to scoop leaf litter and macroinvertebrates out of the stream. But in the pond, we put out leaf packs, which are mesh bags full of leaves. Aquatic macroinvertebrates will crawl into the decaying leaves to hide or feed. We tied the leaf packs to metal stakes so they wouldn't drift away and remained submerged. After a few weeks, we came back to see if any macroinvertebrates were present. This is a midge fly larva. It's a tolerant species that can live in polluted areas. Large numbers of midge fly larvae may be an indicator of poor stream health. 
And this is a dragonfly nymph. It looks a lot different than the adult dragonflies we see flying around, right? Dragonflies start their lives in the water where they can stay for up to four years. They have large mouth parts for catching prey and they can move around quickly by shooting water out of their rear ends. This is an adult dragonfly that has just recently emerged from the water. The dragonfly nymph had to crawl out of the water and shed its hard exoskeleton, and you can see it here clinging to the mushroom it's sitting on. This adult dragonfly will stay here for a little while to dry out and finish extending its new wings before it flies away. That dragonfly was such a cool find, Karen. Thanks for coming in and joining me to talk about aquatic macroinvertebrates and how they can serve as indicators for aquatic habitat health. Thanks, Katie. This is always a really fun topic, so I'm always happy to go out to our local streams and see what we can find. So I look forward to going out again.